A credit union is run by volunteers. That We have a volunteer board of directors where a bank has corporators and trustees. If you have a $5 member account, um, then you are basically an owner of the credit union. You have a right to vote at meetings and so on and so forth. Whereas a bank, you're just a customer. So it, you actually take ownership of the credit union by becoming a member of the credit union. Good evening. Today is June 26, 2014, and this is a special town meeting of the town of Spencer called to decide two articles dealing with the Spencer East Brookfield Regional School District. My name is Peter Adams. I'm your town moderator. I'm advised that we have a quorum, and I call the meeting to order, waiving the reading of the return of the warrant and noting for the record that it has been served and posted by law. For those of you who are willing and able, would you please rise and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? Tonight we again consider the operating budget for the school district and again consider how to resolve the capital needs request for a computer overhaul in the district. Both questions were previously favorably considered by the annual town meeting and both failed on contingent override requests. A revised budget assessment will be presented again <coughs> contingent upon a successful Proposition two and a half override referendum at a date to be set by the select board. A further question asks whether $117,406 in previously approved free cash town capital expenditures should be scrapped in favor of an appropriation of that money to the school district for the computer upgrade project. In a sense, tonight we are asked to pay the piper to provide for the educational needs of our children. And it is appropriate that we decide whether to pay the piper on June 26th. In the 13th century, the town of Hamlin, Germany was overrun with rats. A piper dressed in red clothing and claiming to be a rat catcher offered his services to the town to rid them of rats for a fee. The mayor accepted the offer and agreed to pay him if he was successful. The piper dutifully played his pipe and lured the rats into the Visa River, but the mayor refused to pay the piper for his work. The piper angrily left Hamlin, promising to return for his revenge. On June 26, 1284, while the adults were at church, the piper appeared in Hamlin, played his pipe, and lured 130 children from the town, never to return. While historically it is believed to be true that 130 children did leave Hamlin on June 26, never to be seen again, the actual events remain muddled in antiquity and folklore. But what has survived for over 700 years is the adage, that we pay the piper or we suffer the consequences. Thank you uh, to the Spencer Cable Access for their continued support of your right to know through the telecast of this meeting. Uh, folks on the stage, the select board, to my right, uh, first meeting uh, for Chris Woodbury, the new, me new member, seated immediately on the left, followed by uh, Bo Fritz, the vice chair, Tony Pepe, the chair, Gary Stevens, a member, and John Stevens, a member, I'm sorry. John Stevens, you're the member. I got everybody. Gary Woodbury, the clerk. Now, the procedure at the meeting tonight will be that I will read the article, I will give you a summary of the article, and I will 
call for discussion. The article uh, will be preceded, the discussion will be preceded by a finance committee recommendation. We will then hear from the moving party and then any speaker. To be recognized, just shout, Mr. Moderator, raise your hand. We'll make a lot of noise. Ground rules for addressing the meeting. You must use the microphone in front, identify yourself, and give your home address. Uh, I would ask that you limit your comments, if possible, to five minutes to give everybody a chance to speak. Please refrain from using names, use titles, use previous speaker, use anything, but don't use names. It keeps the uh, conversation civil and keeps the conversation moving. If you wish to amend an article that's presented to you in the form of a motion, you must do that by a written motion to amend. There's a pad and paper here on the stage. You can write that out. If the motion is made and seconded, it will first be considered, and then we will proceed to discussion of the main article. Reconsideration will be entertained only if notice is given from the floor immediately after the article is voted, and then the reconsider article is again voted on at this session. Thank you for attending as we continue this purest form of democracy. <coughs> article 1. The motion I have is I move to waive the reading of the article and approve Article 1 as printed in the warrant. This requires a majority vote. The motion will be made by Mr. Woodbury, seconded by Mr. Fritz. This is the regional school assessment for Spence's share of the fiscal 2015 school budget. Finance Committee, please. The Finance Committee uh, recommends uh, approval of the article as presented, uh, and we'd like to echo the words of the moderator that there is a cost to living in a community and there will be consequences if we choose not to pay the piper. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Woodbury. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Uh, I just want to go over this very quickly to say last time the, the override was for 538000 This has been reduced down to three hundred and eighty-three through the due diligence between the board and the school committee. For that purpose, I recommend that this article get approved. Dr. Malvi, you wish to be heard. Uh, thank you, Mr. Moderator, and good evening. Uh, the school committee um, very deliberatively uh, went back and reviewed the budget that did not, uh, it received uh, town meeting approval, but it did not receive approval through the override. And through their deliberations, they reset a school budget, reducing it by $189,400. The new budget figure is $23,962,395. The reductions that were made, unfortunately, have an impact on the education environment. The committee reduced three elementary teachers, reduced workbooks, library supplies, several positions at team, uh, called Team Leaders at Knox Trail uh, Junior High School, and then a program called Conflict Mediation, where students are trained and staff to deal with youngsters' issues. If you can recall back to the days when you were a beginning teenager, if you will, whether it was junior high or a middle school, it's one of the more challenging time periods for growth and development of children. And there's all types of issues that need to be solved beyond just the education arena. Several years ago, there was this peer mediation program, conflict mediation program, in existence in the junior high, but again, because of budget reductions, it was eliminated. It was recommended by the school principal, Joyce Nelson, to bring that back. It has tremendous value for the overall growth for children. The budget, as we understand it, 
And as we have reviewed it both at the administrative level and through the school committee, albeit we take some additional reductions in the educational realm, we still believe that it represents a quality offering, if you will, to the students across all levels. If we continue to slide further back, as has happened during the previous fiscal year, FY14, and if that continues to happen in FY15, if we're not successful, it will head us down a path that I don't think anyone will really be uh, comfortable with. We're trying to do the best we can, given the resources that both communities are able to provide to us, and we hope that you'll support this request this evening. We are prepared to deal with the limited funds that we have in the supply area. Most of our budget is covered by personnel costs because we're a people business. We deal with professional teaching staff, support staff, psychological staff, occupational therapy, physical therapy, speech therapists, and then a large component of our budget is uh, due to special needs uh, of students. And in addition to that, we have transportation requirements in a regional school district to provide safe and sound transportation for our children. So with that, we bring it forward to you reluctantly with a new budget figure of the 23.9, as I mentioned. That was built upon the additional decrease that you had previously approved, the additional decrease of 189400 and we ask that you support the budget request this evening. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Pepe? Thank you, Mr. Moderator. <clears throat> it's been a long, it feels been like it's been a long two years um, in our relationship with the, with the school district, a, a hard two years, two years filled with, with anger, dissension, acrimony, and, and a lot of hurt feelings at times. I hope today will be the first step and struggle that we have left to get beyond that and move together and help, help improve our uh, educational system in Spencer. What you see in front of you is a reconsidered budget um, that was creatively reworked with the school committee, the administration, and uh, representatives from the town. Um, we, we know it's not perfect. We know there was pain involved in this, and we appreciate that. Uh, but we just want to come together, move forward uh, as a town, and, and end this this schism that exists between uh, the town and the schools. Uh, from my perspective, I've seen a lot of hard decisions being made by the school committee. Uh, benefits, considering buildings, the, the recent cuts they made, the reconsideration of the budget, and possible uh, additional re transportation revenue that may, may come our way. We think this is a regional, reasonable budget, and we're looking at scaling back the assessment. My biggest concern is that we move forward, we get the state out of our backyard, start you know, the, the process of getting the, the, the state oversight out of Spencer and move forward as one community. Thank you. Questions or comments? Mr. Hayes. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Uh, Mr. Pepe is correct. I would like to say tonight that this is uh, a new dawning of a new age here uh, with the select board, the town administrator, and the school department and administration. Uh, after the last vote, the school committee and the administration heard loud and clear what the results of that vote was. We have worked diligently over the last few months with the town administrator and the board of selectmen and the superintendent and the administrative staff to get this budget reduced to where we can still feel that we're coming forward with a positive number that we can continue to provide a good education uh, to our children. At the end of the day, nobody wants to pay any more in taxes. I don't want to pay any more than I have to pay. And I think we've done all we can do to close the gap uh, in this budget. Uh, if your home is assessed at 250000 with what we've reduced, you're looking at an increase of about $70 a year. Uh, not a large number uh, 
to provide proper education to the future generation uh, of the community. Uh, in addition uh, to the reduction of the budget number, we also have been able to eliminate our request for the $630,000 debt exclusion for the technology piece. And uh, with the uh, cooperation of the Board of Selectmen and the uh, town manager, we've been able to close that gap and we're well on our way of being able to provide the computers that we need to start the new year in September. And the final piece is that uh, transportation uh, from the state is on record to be changed, hopefully, for the beginning of the new fiscal year, uh, from 70 to 90 percent, which would result somewhere around $140,000 in savings to us, 120 to the town of Spencer, about 20 to East Brookfield. And the board has already taken that vote that if we are successful in getting that money from the state, we are in turn going to reduce our assessment to the community, which in effect will bring us pretty much in line uh, with a 2.5 uh, percent increase overall. So although I can't come here tonight and tell you that we can come through uh, with a budget that's not going to have any increases whatsoever, I think we're presenting a budget to you tonight that absolutely has no more room in which to be cut. And I think Mr. Pepe is correct. We need to retake control of our school district, get the state back to Boston where they belong, and be able to take care of our kids ourselves in our own community. And a positive vote on this tonight would be the first step to put us on that path. Thank you. Anybody else? Mr. Sherman. Bill Shemeth, 6 Dale Street. Um, we need to end this long and arduous struggle that casts a, a cloud of uncertainty both over those who provide services in town departments and those who try and educate our children. I think the biggest reason why a lot of voters were reluctant to vote for any money for any of the questions was a concern that the state is going to come in in December and then dictate a figure and then all that money, even if you voted to restore money to town departments, is going to go to the school district and then those cuts are going to have to be made anyways. We need to take the first step in restoring confidence in the public as to the fact that it is not a war or a choice between whether we provide a good education for our kids or whether we provide training and, and lifeguard services, library service, and fire department services. We all stand together. Ben Franklin once said, if, if we don't stand together, we will surely all hang separately. And if we don't stand together as a town and a school district, we will all sink separately. You see, and it, it, it's not an issue of the prior superintendent causing a, a problem and then forever we're never going to give money to the school district. If you look in the newspaper, Templeton, Northbridge, Shrewsbury, Dudley, community, Charlton, community after community, because of the way the state has designed its formula in sending you an increased bill every year for what is called the minimum local spending has caused these communities to have to cut town services. So this is a statewide issue. This is no longer an issue of the fact that things could have been run better a year ago. They're being run better now. I know the integrity of the chairman of the school board. I served with him, and even though we guarantee didn't agree on a lot of things, I can guarantee that gentleman would never waste a penny of taxpayer dollars. That you can rest assured. We have still some un, a lot of explanation that needs to be provided to the public. We can't simply put a ballot question on and hope it passes. Both the community, those who care about school services, and the school committee and administration need to do a much better job of advocating to the public why we need these funds and why we, we need to stand up to them and not just hope that it passes. And, and I, I've explained that to both the superintendent and the chairman. We also need to understand that if we are a town worker who's being laid off because the town override didn't pass, 
if we're someone who, who's being laid off at the library or someone who may not be able to use our library card somewhere else or someone who has to stand by and know that we can't provide lifeguard services that we provided for over 50 years to our kids and our families, that until we resolve the school situation, we can't get those town funds back. And one question I would have to the select board would be, and, and it does impact, though it isn't directly on this warrant, is will there be an opportunity if we resolve the school situation and remove that uncertainty, will the voters get another chance to restore those funds? Because the public wants to know that. Also on the school side, uh, what steps are the school dis is the school district taking to meet the requirements of the Department of Education aside from the fiscal issues? That I know the state came out with a report and all, we've heard a lot of negative publicity generated over the fact that various administrators weren't rehired and that high turnover was an issue, but I haven't heard a lot of positive from the school district as to these are the positive steps we're taking in curriculum, teacher training, et cetera, evaluation in order to meet those standards. The public wants confidence that the school district is taking steps to restore credibility and accountability in educational services. And I say this in a friendly manner to the school district because I care about the education of the kids. Everybody knows that. My statements have been consistent. But in order to convince the public and the taxpayer, we need more answers to those issues from the school district and need to know from the town administration that if the school district issue is settled, we'll have a chance to get those town services back. With all that said, my personal belief is, is that if we don't take the step and settle the school district funding, we will continue to lose both town and schools district services, as we've seen if you read the newspaper in town after town after town. Let, it is not a vote to throw money away. It is not a vote to say, I don't care about the town or I don't care about the kids. We have to care all together. It's time tonight we take the first step of community and say we stand together as one to make a better Spencer and for the school district better services for Spencer and East Brookfield students. Please vote for this funding. Dr. Malvey. Thanks, Bill, for the uh, question with regard to the education piece, because that's really the business we're in. Uh, but, but if folks have not listened and seen what we've been doing all year long, then you've been asleep at the switch. I'm not criticizing Bill. I'm saying to those that may not be aware of the good things we are doing on the education front. There was a report that was put out last fall, late fall, with respect to the review that the Department of Education did on a number of standards that historically they would look at in any school district. And Spencer failed the grade, if you will. But immediately when we got that report and we started to digest it on our end and react to it, we put a plan in place. We now have a legitimate curriculum development plan. We have a legitimate professional development plan in terms of opportunities to our professional staff. We have administratively reported out to the school committee publicly on just about every meeting that we've had this year. If we've missed a few, it's only because there was nothing current new to present, and it would just have been a repeat of what we had done at the previous meeting. But we've done that very deliberately so that we could get the message out that despite the fiscal mess that we found ourselves in a year ago, more importantly, the education piece has to rise to the top. So we've been dealing with that on a weekly, monthly, quarterly basis. We've also, through that work, have been able to have the assistance of the Department of Education. And the group that we work closest with is called DSAC, D-S-A-C. It stands for 
the District and School Assistance Center. It's a branch of the Department of Education that has professional expertise to work with districts that have seemed to slip on the education uh, realm, if you will. We've worked very closely with them. If we had to address the educational issues on our own dime, we'd still be behind the door trying to get going. So through the efforts of the Department of Education and the grants that we've been able to bring into the district, we're well down that road to address, not correct yet, but to address that sliding education issue. Through our professional staff, we've been able to develop what we call curriculum mapping. Heretofore, the district has not had any legitimate curriculum uh, products, if you will, to say this is what happens in mathematics in grade one, two, three, four, all the way up the line. Similarly, in science, social studies, English language arts. Not to say that they didn't have material to work on it, but there was no document that we could go to to say this is what the expectations are within each of those disciplines, within each of those grades. The professional staff has done that this year to at least get it on paper, and now we'll do the fine-tuning of it as we go into year two. The next component that we're working on very, very diligently is assessment, <coughs> excuse me, assessment. And if you follow the, uh, the news reports this day and age, all school districts are evaluated according to MCAS. That's the big testing requirement that the state has. Now you will read about the state switching over to a new testing component called PARC. And we're going to be dealing with that as time goes on. But right now, we're holding firm with the MCAS testing. But with that comes data analysis. It means taking a lot of the score reports and doing statistical analyses to find out, are we making incre incremental progress in not only that discipline, but as we further break it down, we can go into the subparts to find out if we need to strengthen certain areas within a particular discipline. That has begun this year through the fine work of our professional staff. And then the comment was made with respect to evaluation. We have now come to agreement, and, and uh, bear with me for a moment, but again, the state has made a requirement of all school districts throughout the Commonwealth to have a new evaluation system, not only for teachers, but for all professionals administrators, including the superintendent. The district was behind in that process to negotiate, and I emphasize the word negotiate. District, as all school districts, had to negotiate a new evaluation agreement with their professional staff. We worked at it throughout the year, and oh, I'm going to say about a month, month and a half ago, we came to agreement with the local teachers union because that's the group you have to negotiate with. The school committee approved it recently at one of their meetings, and I have notified the Department of Education that now we're up to speed with every other school district in the Commonwealth. So I can attest to the fact that we are making progress on all of those fronts. It's not going to be a quick fix. It took you years to get into this mess. It's going to take, my prediction is, three to five years to start to see the results. But the good thing is we are making progress, and I would encourage you to watch the school committee meetings. It may not be as good as the Red Sox game, but we do put out the information, and anyone that has any questions and needs some updates, I don't care how simple the question may be, uh, please do not be afraid to either call your child's school or call the superintendent's office, and we'll get you the answer you deserve. Thank you. Mr. Woodbury. Thank you for all those words tonight. I just want to reconfirm tonight, this budget being set at 383,000, if the state comes in with more of the transportation money, this will be reduced. The problem we can't do it tonight is we have to deal with the numbers that we have. Uh, this board last year uh, stood up and said we felt it was everybody's business to make their vote however they wanted to. I still believe in that. That's why the board held tight to where they were, and we didn't try to force anything on anybody, what I believe that. I can tell you tonight, my belief is the town's done everything they can. This is an acceptable budget. 
that could be even reduced more. So for that reason, I ask that you vote for it. Thank you. Dr. Hicks. Moderator, thank you. But a lot of talk about uh, transportation reimbursement being higher, but there, I don't feel there's been an adequate explanation of it. Uh, Senator Steve Brewer, who most of you know or have seen, is retiring this year. He is the chairman of the Senate Ways and Means Committee, of course, where the budget figures come from. Senator Brewer has always been a champion of regional school districts, and particularly regional transportation. And as a superintendent of schools in another district, I can tell you that he has worked hard and, and called in a lot of chits, if you will, to raise that to the 90% level, which would give us the extra money that we would be getting that would help to lower the assessment to both Spencer and East Brookfield. I think it's important that you know that. Um, some of us kind of joke a little bit that it's his going away present from the, uh, from the State House, and in many respects it is. But uh, you need to know that, and uh, if it passes, what I, which I think it probably has about a 98% chance of passing, uh, if you see Senator Brewer, thank him for that, because instead of just walking off into the sunset and, and basking in his you know, glory of all the years he's been down there, he's still out there fighting for us. And it will have a huge impact on our tax bills. Uh, and you need, to know the, you need to know, I think, why, we're, why people have been talking about that. That's the reason for it. Many of you know Steve Brewer, you know the kind of guy he is, and you're probably not surprised that he's doing something like that. So I wanted to mention it to you so you'd know that, and also to let you know that Steve Brewer is still in there pitching for us. He's not running for re-election. He's not asking for your vote or a, or a donation or anything, but I think it's important that you all know that. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Thank you. Yes, sir. I'm Don Clough for Crestview Drive, Unit 54. You may recall, if you were at the last town meeting, I spoke briefly for two reasons. One, that I was very concerned about the school system. Uh, I've been a resident of Spencer since 1947, and there were years when it was very good, but recently it's gone from excellent to good to not so good and maybe even bad and I wanted to do something that we could do to try to correct that. The other reason was because of the what's happening to our town services, uh, which I need, and I assume everybody else at this meeting needs. And I was really much in favor of both of those overrides at the town meeting. And I'm actually very sorry we're not reconsidering uh, the other override for the town. But as far as the school is concerned, I think this has to get passed. I was very pleased to see it get passed at the town meeting and then get turned down at the polls. So if you're like-minded like -minded and you need to see this get done, if you vote yes tonight, then when you go to the polls, get your friends, your neighbors, family, anybody who's like-minded and get them to go to the polls and vote. That's all I have to say, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Koff. Uh, anybody else like to be heard? Yes, ma'am. Susan Turkanian, 36 High Street. First, I'd just like to say thank you as someone who's gone through this school system for all those people who may or may not have kids, have had kids when I was going through <laughs> and I got a great education. So for anybody who's, who's here that did that, thank you. Second thing is I have a question for um, Dr. Mallory and Julie. What is the cost per pupil to educate someone within our district, if you have that, as opposed to ballpark? Not exactly. How much is it gonna cost us to send kids out of the district for parents who opt to send their kids out? 
Sorry, Dr. 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 Malvi, are you prepared to answer that? No. <laughs> Sit down. <I'll> <laughs> I don't have the exact figure, I'm sorry. Uh, State Department of Education reports that data out usually a year behind. Um, I'm going to take a stab. It's probably in the $9,000, $10,000 range. It could even be higher. Um, and and uh, we just don't have that figure with us tonight. But I also want to comment on it because we'll obviously go looking for it right away. Julie, is that, am I too high with that? I'm talking the per pupil. Close, okay. Uh, but uh, once we, we find that out, we'll try to get it up on our website. But, but even with that, um, you have to look at your community because it's a function of your community. You could have a very, very low per pupil expenditure in a community, but you could have a bang up school district because it's all relative to the wealth of the district. And then you look at what your property values are and your industrial complexes, et cetera, et cetera. Similarly, you could have a very, very high uh, per pupil cost and uh, have an underperforming school district. So you have to, it only gives you a number, but then you have to look into really the dynamics of your community. And that's the best I can give you. But you also asked with respect to students that uh, leave or end our students that come in, and that's the school choice program. And I think the figure that we get is $5,000, so that if we have a child leave our district, opts to go to another district, we lose, we lose $5,000 right off the top. Similarly, if a child from another district comes into our school district, we pick up $5,000. So we look at it as the innies and the outies, and right now we have too many outies that we'd like to see switch over and get more innies. And, and I hope that uh, in two, three years, I, I hope it's sooner, but I hope in two, three years I can pick up the newspaper and see that Spencer East Brookfield Regional School District has turned the corner and the children are coming back. I think one of the biggest draws that will start the ball rolling is when we put this technology issue to rest because we really got uh, blindsided this year with it. And the other pieces that uh, Bill was referring to of what's happening in the district with respect to our curriculum plan, assessment, data analysis, professional development, um, curriculum documents. I think we'll start to see people return to us. But 5,000 either in or out. Thank you. Your question is answered? Thank you. Anybody else? Yes, sir. David Glass, 123 South Spencer Road. Uh, Mr. Moderator, uh, two previous speakers have uh, pretty much alluded to the, uh, the question that I have, but I, I'd like to hear it outright from somebody that knows, uh, maybe the, uh, a select board member or somebody. But I was wondering, uh, assuming that uh, we passed this Article 1 tonight, and that, uh, that it would affect uh, all four segments that's listed here. And I'm wondering, uh, will this in fact uh, actually require a proposition two and a half override vote if uh, we pass this particular Article One tonight? I think I can answer that for you, Mr. Glass, in that the, the article is contingent upon approval of a proposition two and a half override. So the answer is yes. Now, when that override would be held would be up to the uh, select board and, and the requirements of the statutes. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. You're welcome, sir. Anybody else? Are we ready for the vote? All right. Now you're voting to approve the assessments which are printed in the warrant subject to a proposition two and a half override on the motion made by Mr. Gary Woodbury or Mr. Woodbury the Elder, seconded by Mr. Fritz. All those in favor, please raise your cards. Thank you. Those opposed? And the ayes have it. The motion carries.
Article 2, the motion I have by Mr. Stevens and seconded by Chris Woodbury or Mr. Woodbury the Younger is to appropriate $117,406 from free cash and use that, uh, which was a previous uh, appropriation for town capital improvements, and, and turn that over to the Regional School Committee for use in the computer upgrade project. Uh, Mary Brainy, uh, I will have your recommendation, but first I would apologize for not allowing you to introduce the members of the committee. Yes, you would, please. Certainly. The I shall. The members of the Finance Committee present this evening. To my left, Paul McLaughlin, the Vice Chair. Tom Parker, John Damaris. Directly behind me, Julie Parento. To her um, left, Robin Joyce, Bill Wall, and finally, Nancy Herholtz, Clerk of the Committee. And we recommend approval of Article 2. Thank you, Mr. Pepe. Again, if you recall, in the last election, there was a request for a debt exclusion for over $600,000. Um, again, in the spirit of cooperation, our administration worked with the uh, administration for the school district and the school committee, and uh, out of that, uh, the, uh, the, the new approach, we're going to uh, leverage uh, th that free cash amount towards their uh, technology project. Now, it doesn't stop there either. I, I've, I've talked to uh, uh, the chairman of the school committee, uh, and in the future, we're going to work very closely with our our own town's capital process to make sure that the school has a seat at the table whenever we're considering capital projects. So we recommend we uh, approval of this, uh, this, uh, this article. Thank you. Questions or comments? Yes, sir. First, I'd like to congratulate the select board, the school committee uh, for working together to resolve this, begin to resolve this issue. And uh, I know that it's an effort on the part of the select board and, and Spencer to recognize the good faith of the select board in East Brookfield. And uh, I, we need this to continue. We need the school committee members, the select boards from Spencer and East Brookfield to be in their public statements and actions working together as uh, for the benefit of one school district and not making comments that uh, negatively impact whether it be whatever board or, or person it comes from. We need to work together, not against each other. There is a lot of confusion on the part of the computer plan, which again needs to be explained to the public in order to ensure that the public has more confidence to support the funds for the school budget. Uh, the initial document that was presented at town meeting spoke of one million X number of thousands of dollars for the entire computer project and didn't indicate what we were getting at that time for our $600,000. So going forward, we need, and there was also apparently the ability to use some funds within the school district budget that's currently existing to fund some of these things. So some people will then say, well, why didn't you use that money to help reduce the assessment to community and avoid an override? First, the public needs to understand there is a difference between one-time existing revenue and what we call recurring revenue. So a computer purchase would be a capital item, which would be a one-time expense. And so if you had X number of dollars that you didn't need in for a particular item in the school budget on a one-year basis, you could use that, but you can't use that as a recurring revenue, revenue item to pay for a teacher's salary year after year after year. So the effort on the school district and the town is to say you need to pay for recurring expenses with what we call recurring revenue. But the, the public needs to understand, Mr. Superintendent, as to what school district funds were, were used for that expense and some idea of how we're going to deal with the additional potential expenses of the computer upgrade moving forward because 
obviously what we're able to do tonight doesn't meet the initial 600,000 or the additional 400,000 potentially more to resolve whatever computer issues continue to exist. Also, the public needs to know that there is a technology bond bill or, or some sort of funding mechanism currently under consideration at the State House, and we should certainly urge our legislative delegation to support that. And then I would assume that the school district would apply for some funds to help meet some of those expenses. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Hayes. Moderator, I'll let uh, Dr. Malvi, if need be, explain the phases that are going to take place uh, to uh, bring us up to speed with technology. Uh, I think what the important part is that folks need to understand tonight is this was able to come about because of the wisdom of the selectman and the town administrator who contacted us and said, listen, we'll give you some seed money to get this project started, 117000 and you can take your 25000 from each Brookfield from this year. And if we do that, what can you do to redu reduce your, your amount that you're asking uh, for the uh, debt exclusion question? Uh, the superintendent and the administrators and the school board went to work. Uh, we made some pretty tough decisions. We increased uh, percentages on retirees uh, out of the school district. And by doing so, uh, we uh, realized uh, close to $250,000 in savings. We had many positions that were part and full time that it had become vacant that we didn't uh, fill throughout the school year. Uh, we cut to the bones, supplies, and, and uh, purchases that would normally occur throughout the year through a freeze that the superintendent put on. So at the end of the day, because of the seed money that they were uh, wise enough to give us and ask us to come on board and work with them, we have been able to put together some five or $550,000 coupled with theirs so that we could remove that $630,000 question that we asked you to approve the last time. So we stand here tonight uh, being able to go forward in September, putting in place the computers that we need to get the district up and running, and we're going to be able to pay for that with the seed money from the selectmen and from the savings that the administration and the school committee has been able to identify. Thank you, Mr. Hayes. Anybody else? Mr. Glass? Uh, David Glass again, South Spencer Road. Uh, previous speaker pretty much come right out and said that, uh, uh, that the funding for this year is, uh, is, is not going to be a, a debt exclusion question like it was previously. But uh, I got a question about the, the transfer of funds concerning this. Uh, it's uh, apparently coming from uh, available free cash, which I take that to mean that uh, that's from the stabilization fund. And I'm wondering, uh, is that going to leave us the required amount, the minimum amount that's required by the state for us to maintain within that fund? Or is it going to be uh, depleted less than what the state minimum requirement is. And uh, if that is the case, are we now not going to have to have a, an override vote in order to replenish the, uh, the cash, the free cash amount in the stabilization fund? Is there somebody here that can answer these questions? Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Mr. Glass. Mr. Pepe. As a result of this vote, we will not be touching any kind of stabilization uh, accounts. This is strictly free cash that is our excess uh, from the, 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 the year's budget. Um, it's, the, it's, the, it's the funds that we usually use for capital expenditures. This 117 was going to be a holdover, which would have been at our disposal in the fall. We decided to use it for this, uh, for this purpose. Mr. Glass, does that answer your question? So, so I take it then from uh, uh, Selectman Pepe's uh, response that uh, 
this free cash is not actually the stabilization fund then. Is that correct? Okay, thank you. I stand corrected. Thank you, Mr. Glass. It's always nice for us to be corrected. Anybody else? Are we ready for the vote? All right. The motion is by Mr. Stevens and seconded by Chris Woodbury. All those in favor of the article, please raise your cards. Thank you. Those opposed? The ayes have it. The motion carries. Uh, Mr. Pepe. Uh, there was a question earlier about the, the failed override for the town services. Um, that will be reconsidered by this board because of the closeness of the vote. Uh, we'll be meeting in the next few weeks to decide what to do with such an override and how to present it to the communities. But please, uh, if you have a strong opinion either way on that, reach out to us. This is our job. We want to hear from you as far as your, your opinions on the, uh, on the override. In addition, as far as uh, education funding. Uh, this board is going to be proactive. We're, we're not the only town that's struggling with, with local aid for, for education. So we, we've reached out to several communities and we're going to try to unite and put, put some pressure on, on our legislature, legislators to help, you know, fix a system that's obviously broken. So we haven't heard the end of, end of that yet. Thank so you. thank you all for coming out tonight. Good night. Chair will accept the motion. Motion to dissolve the meeting. Seconded. All those in favor? Thank you very much. Good night.